Hey, what's up guys? How you guys doing? This is Ray and in this video I want to talk about online and offline bouncing. If you work a lot in Pro Tools like I do, then you know Pro Tools does not have offline bouncing or rendering. So if your project's an hour long, you have to wait in real time for it to render. If it's three minutes, you have to wait three minutes for it to render. Now you have programs like Reaper that have offline bouncing. So I have a session here, this beat that I made, let me play a clip for you. Nothing fancy. So let's say I've added EQ, compression, everything's done. And I want to create the MP3 and I want to send it out. So I'll go to file, render. Now check it out, guys. Full speed offline. Set the output file and select render. I already have the file there, so I'm going to override. Check it out. Nice. Now that's offline rendering. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch over to Pro Tools. We're going to load the same session. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things you could do. And I'm going to show you how to offline bounce in Pro Tools. So let's go. All right, guys. So I got Pro Tools open. Let's load up a session. Might take a couple of seconds. All right, there we go. So now what I want to show you guys Real-time bouncing and Pro Tools. Let me just zoom in. Let me just grab this random part. And you're going to hold down Control-Alt-B. And the bounce window is going to open. There's a couple of things you can do here. Bounce source, that's your main out. File type. You have Wave, AIFF, MP3, QuickTime, and Windows Media. I'm going to select Wave. Format. Stereo interleave. Bit depth, 24. Sample rate, 48. You could customize this the way you want it, but this is just the way I'm setting it up. And when you're ready, select Bounce. Select your destination where you want to save the file to. I'm going to call it Test 1 and Enter. So there you go. As you can see, it bounced that in real time. If it was an hour long, it's going to take you an hour. That's just the way they did it. But I'm going to show you a workaround. Go over to your mixer window, create a new track, a new stereo track, name it New Master. Go to your setup, go to I.O., go to Bus, New, New Master, Stereo, left, right, there we go. All right, here's what we're going to do. We have to send everything to the new master track, but we have to be careful. We have the hats, snares, and kicks going into this drum, aux, so we can't change this. So we have to work around that. We got this track, these four tracks selected, and now what you're going to do, you're going to hold down Shift-Alt, and then the output, you're going to go to bus, new master. So as you can see, these four tracks are going to that new master. Now the drum, snare, and hats are going into this aux, so we can't change that. But we could change the output of this aux and set it to new master. And then the rest of the tracks, you could just send to new master. Now in the new master track, select record. And uh, anywhere in the session, just hit play, see if you hear any sound. Okay, we don't hear anything. Why? Because you have to turn on input monitoring. So that would be control K. Let me check it out. Over here, I didn't select the input to be new master. And now hit play. You still don't hear nothing. Alt K. There you go. You're not gonna hear anything. Alt K. There you go. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go all the way to the beginning of the track. And we're just gonna record. F12 on the keyboard. You can see we're recording. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole track, but so here's where this comes in handy. What we're doing here, we're basically bouncing to track. Instead of bouncing to this, we're bouncing to track. Let's say this was an hour long. Now you can edit. So if I don't like this part, I could go here. I could start recording. I could go here. Okay. Could go here. 
You see? So basically, if you don't like something, you could always stop, edit, and start recording again. As when you're bouncing in real time, you can't stop. If you do, forget about it. You have to start from the beginning. This comes in pretty handy. So now let's say you're done. You select the whole thing. You want to consolidate. So that's Shift, Alt, and 3. And there we go. So one part now. I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to call it Test 101. And hit OK. So that's the name, Test 101. And you know what? Let's just hear it. I'm, I'm going to take it off record because I don't want to hear any of the other tracks. Play. There you go. So everything sounds pretty good. By the way, guys, one thing I wanted to point out, sometimes if you hear any clicks or pops, you can just put a fade right in between. But you know, for now, really not going to do that. And look, I changed the name, so let's just call it new 101. And now what we want to do, we want to go to the regions window. So over here, you have this little arrow. You see, I opened the regions window. You have all the tracks here. Everything that's in your session, your edits, your delete, everything's here. You want to click the new track we just created, and it's going to highlight. You're going to go to it, you're going to right click, you're going to go to export regions as files. And this looks like the bounce window. Basically it's the same thing, file type, select whatever you want, format, bit depth, sample rate, and conversion quality. I'm going to keep it at default, the way it is there. I'm going to select directory, select desktop, and I'm going to hit export. And that's it, no real time bouncing. How cool is that? So if I minimize Pro Tools, here's my new file. You know, it really wouldn't have made sense to record everything and then bounce to disk. So we basically record to this one track and just export. And it exports really quick. And trust me, it comes out handy. About a year ago, I interviewed somebody and it was about an hour and 20 minutes. And this is exactly what I did. I went through the whole interview, did all the edits, recorded, and then I just exported and it was done really quick. I didn't have to uh, wait for the real-time bouncing. Now, another reason this is pretty cool, let's say you're working on a song and you do the mix, you have the final mix here. So if you just export the mix, you could lose it. Let's say you put it to your C drive and um, you just delete it by accident, then you have to go back into Pro Tools and bounce to this. If you do it this way, your mix file is always gonna be there. So you just open the session and you have your Pro Tools session plus the, the finished product there. And you could do takes also, like over here in the new master, click new, new master, 111, and I just want to record. Oh, I have to set that to record. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go through it. Now you have multiple takes. So you can see you have the one we did before. So you could record as many takes as you want, and you could always go through them. As long as you name them, you know what they are and you're good to go. All right, guys, so that's how you bounce the track. That's how you avoid real-time bouncing in Pro Tools. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if I missed anything, just please post in the bottom, let me know. Don't forget to rate the video, give me a thumbs up. This is Ray, and I'm out of here. Later, guys.